Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. I thank God for this chance in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord truly be glorified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I welcome everybody to this discipleship teaching today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, those in person on Zoom, I speak the blessings of the Lord upon every one of you guys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord keep you on, the Lord keep you faithful unto him in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord continue to do great and mighty things in your life, which you do not know of yet, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Without further ado, I just want to just pray over the word and then to give honor where honor is due in Jesus' name. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we lay down a crown before you, Lord God. We invite your presence, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We give our bodies and our life unto us, a living sacrifice, holy and sacred unto you. This is a reasonable act of service and of worship unto you, Lord God. We pray that, Father, please be with us, Lord God, in the midst of, in the midst of this time, Lord God, in the midst of service that we ask, Lord God, for a visitation, Lord God. We ask for an outpouring of your spirit, God, to rest upon every one of us in Jesus' name, Lord God, in fresh revelation for the fresh anointing, fresh oil. We we'll pray for me, do something this day, Lord God, this night this morning in Jesus we pray Yeshua to God the Holy Spirit amen 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 hallelujah glory to God in Jesus name I want to give honor we honor do I give honor to God I give honor to our Lord Jesus Christ and to Holy Spirit I thank God for just keeping me alive today it's only by his mercy by his grace I'm here today before you guys in Jesus name also I'm alive in the land of the living so it's only by his grace and I thank God also for Apostle Hamilton his wife Lady John Hamilton as well for everything do for us even the labor they put on the altar to, for just for us to be rooted, for us to stay planted in Christ, it's all because of the grace of the life and the hope. So I thank you, Apostle Jesus, and I bless you, Jesus' name, and your wife as well. And I give honor to every minister here and every person, every king, every queen here, every son and daughter of the Most High God. I truly greet you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Those on Zoom, thank you for being your places. We see you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, let's, get, let's dive into it. Today, I'm going to more kind of give more like a charge in the name of Jesus Christ, as the Spirit lead me to give a charge today. So we go, the title today is, When Will the Church Arise in You? When Will the Church Arise in You? Hallelujah. And the first, the first book we're going to be in is, is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. When will the church arise in you? And this is a personal question for yourself because you will determine when the church is going to rise in you. You will determine when the kingdom of God is going to be alive and effective in your life. It's all going to depend on you. It's going to depend on how much labor you're willing to put on your altar, how much you're willing to walk in obedience to God. When will the church arise in you? It's depending on you. It's going to depend on your obedience to God. It's going to depend on your, on your reference for God. So therefore, it's all going to depend on you. When will the church be made manifest within you? It's going to depend on you. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Got to give Moluri to read it in the name of Jesus. Can you get the mic right? Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. So therefore, the, uh, the Lord is saying, if my people who are called by my name, so therefore we are called by the name of God, for we are all sons of God, so we have received the name, so we have received the same name that Christ also is called, because he's also called the son of God, so we receive the name also. But he's saying, if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, the thing about us also is that we're too arrogant, we have an ego to point that we don't want to humble ourselves and pray that God may restore our land. That's why our land is also in chaos, because why? We don't want to humble ourselves, but all God is saying if just if one person will humble themselves before God and seek his face and be like, no, if they won't do it, I'm going to humble myself. And that person is basically being in a role of an intercessor. An intercessor go before God and be able to plead with God on behalf of land, on behalf of people and cities. So all God is saying, if my people, all I need is one person. Humble themselves before him and also ask for forgiveness for, 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 for basically for the whole city. Can you be the one person to be able to humble yourself before God, even if nobody else will? Even if we choose not to humble ourselves, will you be the one to be like, you know what? If that won't do it, I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to be the one to be able to give my life unto God. That God may spare me, that he may spare every one of you guys. Will you be the one to come basically before God? That God, that God may be able to forgive us, or all of us of our sins, all because one person paid the price. Will you be the one? The Lord is looking for judges. God is looking for people who, whom, whom he can raise up as judges because the days of judges is not over yet. We're still in those times also because God is raising up peculiar people. And I'm telling those, those people are also within this ministry and in his image. So therefore God raising up every single one of us here. And there's a peculiar anointing upon every one of us here that we all carry. But guess what? You must be able to let the church become alive in you. But it's going to be dependent oh, on your obedience to God. So therefore this day the Lord is looking for judges. A judge is a person who is willing to walk in obedience to God to bring judgment upon his people without, without even fearing what the people will say about it. Can you be the judge that God can use to be able to bring judgment upon the people? Jeremiah was a judge for the Lord. To a point that, to a point that he got weary of being a judge for God, but he wanted to stop speaking the word of God, but he couldn't because why? The word of God burned in his heart. Will you be a Jeremiah for a generation? Will you be an Ezekiel? Ezekiel was a watchman over, over a generation. Ezekiel was the one who over it to be able to pay the price to be able to walk in with pity to God, even though people were wanting to go against him. We still obey God. Will you be a watchman? Will you be the watchman over your own family? Will you be the watchman over a generation? Will you be a Jeremiah for this generation? Will you be an Ezekiel for this generation who will be able to stay in the gap in the midst of people? Will you be the one to reason for God? Will you be the one to reason for the, on behalf of the people? Or are you still worried about your life? You still worry about what, what people are going to say about you. And my people are called by my name. You have been called by God. You are called by his name. When will the church arise in you? When will the church awaken in you? When will the church arise together? We're supposed to be pressing to the mark of the high calling. When will we arise? Let's go to the book of Judges chapter 4, verse 6. Verse 4 through 6. Judges chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Judges chapter 4. Hallelujah. The Lord is looking for people who will lead his people into battle. The Lord is looking for people who will be able to go to war on behalf of other people. The Lord is looking for people who will be able to stand. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The church will arise in me. Hallelujah. The church is rising in me. The church has risen in me. Everybody repeat after me. The church is rising in me. The church is rising in me. The church has risen 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 in me. The church will arise in you. The church will arise in you. Say to a neighbor, the church will arise in you. The church will arise in you. Say to your other neighbor, the church will arise in you. The church will arise in you. Hallelujah. Let's go to Judges chapter 4, verse 6, verse 4 to 6. Hallelujah. May Mr. Mumbo and every you there in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, let me get Riziki to read for us on Zoom. Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 6 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Rizzi, keep you there. I remember the name of Jesus. It says, The Lord will have to get the three person. Verse 4 to 6. Does it before verse 4 or to 6, right? Yes, ma'am. Deborah. De Deborah. Lapidum. Yes, ma'am. Deborah, the wife of Lapidum, was a prophet who was just a Israel at that time. She was still in the form of 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 Jeff, of, of Deborah. Between Rama and Bethel in the hill country of Israel, and the Israelites will go to her for judging. One day she stands before Barak, son of Abinon, 
who lived in Kedish in the land of the Naphtali. He said to them, This is what the, the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribe of Mecca uh, and Zebulon. Zebulon. Zebulon and at, at the Mount of the Poor. Hallelujah. 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 So therefore, we see that Deborah, she was a prophet. And not, not only was she a prophet, she was also a judge. We know that Barak was also, he was basically a general who led God's army into battle. So therefore, my question is, when will the Deborahs of our generation arise? Yeah. Once we'll be able to judge yeah. the children of Israel, one will be yeah. able to judge the system of the world because Deborah was not afraid to judge the children of Israel because they came to her for judgment. They came to it to be corrected. So when will we arrive to be able that when people come to us, because I was telling them people, people from foreign nations will be able to come to us. But we gotta be able to be able to walk in the spirit and give them the word of the Lord, just how God gave it again unto us to give it to them. We cannot we cannot be afraid to give the word of God to people. Yes, sir. We can't be afraid to walk as a Deborah. We cannot be afraid to walk as the Barak because God is God, God is bringing up generous. The question is, Hallelujah. when will the kingdom of God arise in you? Because for you to be able to walk, to be able to walk in the mantle of the Bible, to be able to walk in the calling of Barak, you gotta be able to yield to the Holy Ghost. And guess every one of us here, believe it or not, there's a Deborah among us. There is a Barak among us, but guess we will be able to let the kingdom of God arise with you because God is looking for churches. He's still looking for churches, he's looking for people who will be able to stand the gap. But question is, will you be the one? Can you be able to stand in the gap? Can you be a Jael who will be able to deliver the army of God from its enemy? Will you be the one for our generation? We see Enoch. Enoch was close to with God. Enoch was so close with God to a point that he, he was basically the spirit of intimacy. Will you be the one to walk close with God like Enoch did? Will you be an apostle Paul for a generation who was, who was a carrier of the mysteries of God? He carried the mission of God. Even Daniel carried the missions of God. When will we be the one to be able to carry the missions of God also? I want to be a carrier of the presence of God. I want to be a carrier of the glory of God. I want to be a carrier of the missions of God, the spirit of God. I want to be filled and drunk with the Holy Ghost. But will you also be drunk with the Holy Ghost? Will you also be a carrier of the missions of God? God is trying to, God is trying to, God is the business of raising up churches. He's raising up people, even prophets. He's raising up even evangelists. He's raising up even people who, who shall be on the altar called intercessors. People who to stand the gap. My question is, when will the kingdom of God arise in you? When will the church arise? When will the church be able to arise and walk in the power of the spirit? Oh man, I can't wait to get to, I cannot wait to, oh, I can't wait to get to, to Joshua. I can't wait to get to Joshua, hallelujah. So Deborah, Deborah was a judge and she was a woman. She didn't fear men. That's right. She didn't fear many at all because she knew who she was in God. That's and she was able to walk and stand on the identity. When will we, as a church, be able to walk and stand on identity in Christ Jesus? In regardless of what people say about it, I must still say, you know what? This is who I am. You can curse at me, but this is who I am. I'm not changing because you cursed at me. I'm not changing because I fell. This is who I am. If I fail, I get back up. If I suffer, I get back up. If I lost at me, I get back up because why? This is who I am. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of integrity. You are a son of royalty. That's who you are. Walk in royalty. Walk in integrity, humility. The girl walk in humility. She walk in integrity. When would the women arise and walk in integrity? When would the sons arise and walk in royalty? Are we not the sons of royalty? Are we not the sons of God? In my people who are called by my name, you are called by his name. Royalty is part of who you are. When shall you arise? Or because somebody curses you, you're going to be like, no one, I won't be like that no more. Or because somebody says something bad to me, or because somebody said to me, oh, you know what, I won't be a child of God anymore. You're a child of God regardless of what they say about you. You got to be able to love who you are in God. Because if you don't love who you are in God, it means it's going to be, you're gonna, you're gonna, this journey is going to be really long for you. So therefore, let's go to, hallelujah, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. And every day, Shima, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Enoch. Enoch 
who is the man of God. Enoch walked so close to talk. He, well, he walked so intimately with God to point that when he was walking, he disappeared because why God took him? Who will be that Enoch for a generation who will be able to walk so close with God that God's like, you know what? I'm going to bring you back home. And Enoch carried the mysteries of God also. When we carry the mysteries of God, it's not about where you are with God, right? Do not worry about what level you are with God. When will you carry the mysteries of God? And that takes intimacy. We do it in how do we know intimacy from Enoch? We are closely with God. That's right. Let's go for First Corinthians chapter four, verse one. Sister Shima, whenever you're there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So then, let us who minister be regarded as servants of Christ and stewards, trustees, administrators of the mysteries of God that He chooses to reveal. Of the what? Of God. Of the mysteries of God. Stewards, carriers of the mysteries of God. Apostle Paul was a carrier of the mystery of God. Terence is a carrier of the mystery of God. Paul is a carrier of the mystery of God. Sama is a carrier of the mystery of God. We, we're not just limited to the things that the apostle did. We will also do the things that the apostle the old did. We also do it because the same God they serve, the same God we serve, the same spirit in them, same spirit working us. So therefore, he's also the spirit of mystery. We got the spirit of mystery within us, and that is the Holy Ghost. So therefore, what makes you what makes you think that you that, so what was so what makes you think that you will not be able to do what Enoch did, what Joshua did? What makes you think that you will not be able to walk the same way the Apostle Paul did? What is it that what is it about them that they were going to walk in the such power? Because they see him that's invisible. But guess what? You too can see him that's invisible. Are you willing to pay the price to see him that's invisible? Men like Moses. When would the Moses of our generation arise? What did Moses do? What did Moses do? Moses, he walked close with God. 40 days and 40 nights, he was in the presence of God. No food, no water, but yeah, he was in the presence of God. And God revealed some things before time began. But how? But how is that possible if he's not in the presence of God? Consecrated, fully unto God. He, God revealed some things before time began. Things before he was even born. And guess what? He can reveal it to us too. But are we willing to walk in that ordination? Are we willing to walk in the alignment with God, with the Spirit of God? To the point that even Moses was able to follow God into the deep. Can we too also follow God into the deep? Can we too also be able to follow Jehovah Sephaniah into the deep? He's the Lord that hides himself. But Moses saying, no, you hide. I'll follow you. Will we follow God? Will we be able to follow God? Can you be a Moses for our generation? Can you be the one? The Bible says there was none like Moses. And remember, look, quoting the scripture, none like Moses. But remember, say, you know what? I'm going to be like Moses also. Because I too will see the Lord face to face. No, will yeah. you see the Lord face to face? Will you pay the price as Moses did? Even though Moses stuttered, he was still a God over, over Pharaoh. Who said that we cannot be gods? Who said that the Lord cannot make us in? Who said that we cannot carry the spirit of Moses? Who said you cannot walk closely with the Lord as Moses did? There was none like Moses, but guess what? Jesus Christ has resurrected. Guess what? Now they can't be more like Moses. Will you be like Moses? Mama, will you be like Moses? See the Lord face to face. Walk the Lord face to face. Will you be the one? Will you be the one? Let's go to Acts. Step, let's go to Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Verse, Acts chapter 7, verse 57 to 60. Acts chapter 7, verse 57 to 16. And Claude, you got it? Let's talk about Stephen real quick. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 7, verse 57 to 16. Acts 7, 57 to 16. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran out with him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the women lay down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they saw the servant as they stolen on God and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60. Then he lay down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not chide them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May even Stephen be stoned. 
he will be stoned, being killed. But when they step into him, he pleaded on the behalf of the same people who was killing him. Man, when will people like this arise in our generation that even people who really kill you, you're still able to pray for them and God may forgive them because why? They'll know what they're doing, but because you know, you know where they are, you're able to pray for them. When will men like Stephen arise in our generation? Within in this image, when will Stephen arise? He will be stoned for this gospel. He will be so because the faith in God be there. He was still willing to pray for some people who as well persecuted him. When would Stephen arise within our generation, within the youth, within this, within the ministry? When would Stephen arise? Yes, sir. Will you be a Stephen somehow? Will you be a Stephen Lisa? Will you be able to plead for others? Even though people may hurt you, even though you, even though you may be heartbroken, we used to plead on their behalf. Will you be a Stephen for our generation? When would the church arise in you? When would the kingdom of God awaken within you? Stephen. Remember Stephen. He was a man filled with the power of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with wisdom. But yet, he still able to plead for others. Let's go to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham was the man of the altar. So was Isaac, so was Jacob. But guess what? Abraham was at the city that was not built by men. A city built by who? But the Lord himself. When will we be like Abraham to be altars wherever we go? Because why? Abraham had encounters with God. He had different encounters with God. Each encounter he had with God, he gave him a, he gave, he gave a name unto the Lord. This is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. This is Jehovah El Shaddai. He's the Almighty God. This is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. When will we have the counter to give a name to a God like God? This is my God. This is Jehovah Shalom. Have you met Jehovah Shalom? Have you met Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides? Have you met El Shaddai? Have you met him? This all dimensions within God. But have you met him yet? Have you met the one who also cleanses of our sins? Have you met him yet? Abraham was the man of the altars. And I'm not talking about physical altars. When will, when will your altar be activated? The many, many altars are desolate because there is no fire. But when will your altar begin to have fire? When will your altar burn from night to morning? When will your altar burn? Yes, sir. Abraham, the man of the altars. Samar, a woman of the altars. Fisting, a man of the altar, just like Isaac was. Bosco, a man of the altar. Just, uh, just, like, just like Abraham was, but guess where his goal was to see a city was not built by God, was not built by man, but a city built by God. Will you be the one to see? Will you be the one to see beyond the natural realm? Can we see God beyond the natural realm? Can we see even the spirit realm? Can we have angelic encounters as Abraham did? He was considered the father of faith. When will you be the father of faith for the generation? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He promised God, promised God made a covenant with them. Can God make a covenant with you? Can God make a covenant with us that's going to last thousands of generations? Even though Abraham died, he never saw the promised land. But he did see, he did see the city which was built by God. Even though Abraham died, his covenant still lives today. When he established something by faith, that even though generations passed down, it's still effective to this day. When will you become an Abraham? Isaac and Jacob. When will you become a Sarah for our generation? If Sarah was able to call her, her, her own husband Lord, when would the women of our generation be like, you know what, I submit you as my Lord? That's right. Ah. When will Sarah's arise? When would the boys arise? When would Naomi's and Ruth arise within our generation? Right. We're going to continue to play church. When shall we arise? <clears throat> in March of the 10th, verse 28. Peter is saying, Lord, we gave everything to you. And that's the price you got paid. We gave up everything to you. Where shall we go, Lord? We should go nowhere else, Lord, because why? The kingdom of God was made alive within them. Because they saw him that was invisible. God, we gave up everything for you. I have nowhere to go back to. I can't go back to the world, Maluli. We can't go back to us. We cannot go back to the world, Maluli. Because why? You gave up everything to follow God. You gave up everything to be who God called you to be. Because we're pressing to mark the high calling. I don't want to be conformed to his death. I too want to partake in his suffering also. But guess what? I want to reign with Christ also. But to reign with Christ, you must first suffer with Christ also. So therefore, even Peter was able to suffer with Christ. And now, guess where you're at? He's reigning with Christ. When will we become the Peter of our generation? The Peter whose who shadow was able to help people. Peter's what? His shadow was able to help people. Can you be able to walk in that power with even your own shadow? He was the same. Apostle Paul, his apron, was able to cast out demons. When will your apron be able to do the same thing also? Can we, can we be, can we be, or can we walk in the same power as the positive also? We got the spirit, the same spirit that got within us, but when will we awake and walk in the power of the spirit? Why are we still asleep? Why are we still asleep? Why are we still asleep? 
We say that you cannot do a puzzle party. We say that God, the Bible says God has given us authority over all unclean spirits, over all disease and sickness. It's just a matter of exercising it. When will you exercise that power within you? When will you be able to be like Ezekiel? Who had angelic encounters? When you when will you be like Nehemiah? Who rebuilt the wall of Israel? Who will be able to stand the gap? Because you know, because we know that Tobias and Sembalis, they will come. But when will you stand against them? They will send letters trying to confuse you. Will you be in Nehemiah and be like, you know what? I'm a, I'm not going to oh no. I'm right here. This is my office right here. This is what I'm called to be. I'm called to be on the altar. You're called to be in the pulpit. Will you say where God placed you at? Because that is where your ministry is at. Will you be like any of the prophetess? What did any of the prophetess do? Anybody. What did any of the prophetess do? Where? And that's where her ministry was at. She didn't move nowhere. What did she do? She fasted. What else? She prayed. And she read to God. Day and night. For what? For salvation to come. She is the spiritual mother of Christ. And what did Simeon only do? He prayed on the altar. He prayed on the altar. Simeon could not die until he see the salvation. Until he see Christ come. His job was to pray for Mary also. His altar is what birthed Mary. His altar is what also gave access to Mary to carry Christ. And guess what? That's a mystery that God is able to give to us by the way of the Spirit. Okay, when, when, will, when any of the prophets will arise, who will carry the mantle of any of the prophets? You will be able to labor on the altar at the intercession. When will you arise, somehow, this intercession? When will you be able to intercede? When will you be able to pray for others in the name? When will the end of the prophets of our generation arise? The end of the prophets in his image arise. When they arise? They're looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. When will the sons of God manifest? When will the sons of God manifest? When will Job's arise? Who is able to be tested not once but twice and still did not curse God? Who who at the end of his time got double of everything he lost at the double beginning? Everything. Can you be the one to walk that fifth and receive double of everything you lost at the beginning of the terrorist? Uh, you lost your sister, but yet you still walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. You're still able to believe in God. With everything, everything. You love your sister so much, but yet you still remain faithful to God. Uh, and may the Lord restore you double than what you lost in the beginning. For his name's sake, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you gave up for God. That lust you gave up, that anger you gave up, that peace. That peace you had to be restored. May you receive double the everything you gave you gave up yes, you see double the joy of the Lord. Everything you gave up for his kingdom, you receive double for it. Oh. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys. Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. Where are they in a generation? Where are they in a generation? We say, oh no, okay. We kept for chance in this manner. They didn't bow down to the image of the king. Because they knew who their God was. Do you know who your God is? Do you know who Christ is? Who is Christ to you? Who is Jehovah Jireh to you? Who is Jehovah Adonai? Who is El Shaddai to you? Who is the Lord that supplies your needs? Who is that? The Hebrew boys are like, you know what? We, even though if God did not come and rescue us, we still would not give up our faith. Even though, even though something will happen to us, will you still give up your faith? Not the Hebrew boys. They say, turn up seven times harder. Many of us, on the first time, on the first, on the first try, we would have given up our faith. Seeing the fire, not gonna lie, I would have given up too because why? My skin is sensitive to fire. It really is. But the Hebrew would say, even if God does not show up, what kind of faith they had? That even if God does not show up, I will not lose my faith. I will not turn against him. That even when, even when you're throwing the fire in the furnace, the fourth man in the fire, they found him. Who was the fourth man in the fire? Was it now Yeshua? When shall you encounter Yeshua in the midst of your fire? When will the Hebrew boys arise within a generation? We'll be like, you know what? Turn up seven times. Because I know who my God is. If I burn, if I die, I die. I live, I live. Because why? Yeshua must be seen. It's not about me no more. It's about Yeshua. Let's talk about Elijah. When will the Elijah of a generation arise? Elijah was able to speak a word to, to a king of to, to Ahab, the king of Israel. Elijah was like, you know what? Okay, be careful because I'm gonna pray for it not to rain. And guess what? It did not rain. When will you pray for it not to rain? And it will not rain. Pastor said, not one more drop. And guess what happened? Not one more drop. And so he said, so not one more. For three and a half years they prayed. He prayed. The Lord back up his word. When will God back up your words? Pray not to rain. Elijah said, you know, I'm going to pray again for it to rain. He prayed and rain came. 
He prayed and fire came. If I be a man of God, he said, then let fire fall from heaven and consume my enemies. Can you be able to pray the same way the physical fire comes down and consume your enemies? Who say you cannot walk in? Who say you cannot be Elijah? John the Baptist was also Elijah to come. Who say you too cannot be a John the Baptist? Who say you too cannot be an Elijah? Yeah. Who say you can you know, you know what Elijah did that surprised me? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 14 to 17. This is what Elijah did. And you too can do it also. But when will the kingdom of God waken up within you? When will the church arise in you and me? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 14 to 17, Sister Lisa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings 4, chapter 14 through 17 reads. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Hmm. Jehazi she, she answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, at this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, a man of God, do not lie to your servants. But the woman conceived, and she oh, bore her son about the time the following spring, as same Elisha time. had said to him. Same time. Same time. When we'll be able to speak a prophetic word. The same time next year, you're going to receive your breakthrough. Same time today, you'll be restored. When we'll be able to walk in the power that today, Pastor, you are restored. When shall we walk in the power that when we speak the word, it will not drop down to the ground? And guess who, guess who else spoke a word and then the words never fell to the ground? Sadly. Since every sin, the Lord said, No, this is mine. Give it some back onto me. And guess what? Hannah did. Hannah gave it back. Hannah gave it back onto him. Unto the Lord, and ever since then, every word the seven spoke did not fall to the ground. But we too can walk in the same power, we too can speak, we too can speak a word, it will manifest. But when will the church arise it within me? When will I wake up and be like, you know what, I too can walk in, can, can walk in the power of the spirit, just like how Philip did? What did Philip do? Philip traveled by the world way, but when shall we be able to travel? When shall we be able to travel by the spirit, the spirit also? The awaken the inner transport systems, when shall we be able to walk by spirit? I know we got cars. If the witches can do it, what means the kingdom of God can do it also? You too can travel by the spirit from one city to another. If, if even we have evidence in the Bible say somebody, oh, Philip did it. He battled a, 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 a eunuch and guess what? He, he, and then the spirit of the Lord took him to Samaria. And guess, and guess what he did in Samaria? He flipped the whole city upside down. Everybody believed in the Lord. When shall we go to win? When will we be able to walk to a city and flip it upside down for the Lord? When will we win with the Philip of our generation arise? When with the Hebrew boys, when with the Daniel, even thrown in the lion's den, you still will now, you still will now give up on God in the lion's den. The hungry, the lions were hungry, but they guess what? Daniel still found blemish before God. Don't make me a king. Make me a Abednego. Give, 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 give them all titles. But me, I was staying at the gates of Jerusalem, pray three times a day. When will we be able to pay the price to do the same thing also? When will the John the Baptist arise? His job was to pre prepare a way for Jesus Christ. That's every one of our job. Every one of us here play the role of John the Baptist because why? We're to prepare a way for Yeshua. But one thing, a mystery that I did receive the Lord is what, what, what the Lord spoke unto me is that Elijah must come back before Christ can return. And why do I say this? Who was Elijah when Christ, and, and during Christ's time? John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist do? He walked in the power and the spirit of Elijah. And guess what he do? Prepare the way for Yeshua. So therefore, every one of our job, prepare the way for Yeshua. But when will the kingdom of God arise? When will, when, when the sons of God arise? When shall we walk in humility and integrity? Apostle Paul, been all over his life unto death. He got stoned to death. They prayed over him. Guess what this man did? Woke up and said, let's go to the next city. No time to wait. Stoned to death. It's only response was the will of God. Yeah. Kingdom minded. It's not by me no more. Yeah. Kingdom must be able to be advanced. When shall we arise? When will the worshippers arise? Miriam was a worshiper. When will she arise? David trained 400 men, not with sword, but with sound. Trained 400 men with sound. 
shout from heaven when will David arise? We'll be able to carry the head of the giant of the enemies around. When will David arise? We'll be able to come at the cave of Adonai with 400 men, submit to him out of nowhere. That's right. Train them. We just use the sound. When will the David arise within in his image? Within a generation, within the youth. And do not limit yourself saying, I too cannot walk in it. Let's go to Acts to the 10, verse 38. This is where we stop. Acts 10, verse 38. And this, and everybody, I want you to read this scripture to yourself. And instead of putting Yeshua, put your name. Acts 10, verse 38. Hallelujah. Acts 10. We need some more King Josiahs. Don't worry about your age. You King Josiah, you're still able to restore the true order of worship within Israel. Hallelujah. Tear down altars. Because why are you all about your father's business? Acts 10, verse 38. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, can I give Mama to read it? Claudia you rejoice next. Jill rejoice. Sama rejoice. And then also, hallelujah, but the fifth thing can rejoice also. Acts 10, verse 38. Hallelujah. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And you. Hallelujah. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed the young woman with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost of the power. Who we go about doing good in all who are blessed by the devil. Because God is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get everybody to stand up real quick? Can everybody stand up real quick? Because we all go proclaim the same scripture with your name in it. And please say it like you mean it because this, this, this is real stuff. Amen. Go ahead, Claude. How God anointed Claude of Yusuf with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who are blessed by the devil. For God was with him. Hallelujah. Sister, it's a name. No, we're apostle. Go ahead, apostle. Hallelujah. You're going to go in order. Hallelujah. How God anointed Daniel Hamilton. Hallelujah. In Missouri City, Texas, with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Because God is with God, God is with you. Hallelujah. It's the name. It's the, the name. And you're on Zoom. Get your scriptures ready on Zoom. Get your scriptures ready on Zoom. Get your scriptures ready on Zoom. Hallelujah. Go ahead, it's the name. Good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God 
Hallelujah. Wolulia, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How God anointed Luli of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power to win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is about doing good and healing? All who are pressed by the devil for God was with them. Hallelujah. Fish days. Hallelujah. 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 Because in the Holy Ghost. Ah. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With the power. Hallelujah. We went about doing good. Hallelujah. And healing all that were oppressed. Oh, the devil for good was working. Hallelujah. 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 Next time, next time, next time. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. How God anointed Davy and Harper. Hallelujah. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with me. Hallelujah. Oh, for tea, oh, for tea. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my God. Man for the Bosco. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, 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 oh. How God anointed in Yahoo the Bosco for Bruti. Hallelujah! With the Holy Ghost Spirit and the power who went about to the good. Hallelujah! He is all who were oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah! For oh, God is with you. Hallelujah. 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 G.O. Hallelujah. Name of Zoom. Get ready on Zoom. Hallelujah. How God anointed and consecrated. G.O. Hallelujah. Brother John, Brother John Mondani, go ahead, big bro. Sister Riziki, get ready, Riziki. Hallelujah, Sister Riziki. Me? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Michaela, if you're there, Sister Michaela. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Guess what we're going to say for her? How God anointed Michaela. God anointed Michaela. Let's say it together. How God anointed Michaela. With the Holy Ghost in power. Who went about doing good. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil. 
for God was with him. Oh, this is the lesson you did. Hallelujah. Oh, look at what we hear first, Acts 10 38. And put your name instead of Christ. Are you there yet? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, it says how God wants to teach us to master with the Holy Spirit power and healing all who are in the power of the devil because God is with them. Can you read it again? Excel saying Jesus put your name in it. Can you repeat it again, Sister Leslie? And so, it so saying, she just put your name in it. Say your name instead. Uh-huh. Can you read it again? But instead of saying how God anointed Jesus Christ, say how God anointed Leslie. How God anointed Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, this is the Jaleel. Hallelujah, this is the Jaleel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jaleel, Judea. Hallelujah. Oh, Rekatina. In the name of Jesus Christ, all is all set together for them, for Jaleel and Judea. How God anointed. Jaleel and Judea and Lady J. With the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good. The healing all who oppress. By the devil. For God is with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, how God anointed Samuel to bring the into the meal. The Holy Ghost in power. With the Holy Ghost in power. Who went about doing good. And all goes to pray for the devil. Because God is with me. So therefore, that which the apostles did, you could do it too. Because why? God's word, God was with them, now he's with you too. Hallelujah. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for this word, Lord God. We thank you for this time, Lord God. We thank you for the for this opportunity to come before you, Lord God. We ask we pray for the big daughter to be grateful, Lord God. Even as you brought it for the praise, God. Give us grace, Lord God, to be able to walk in the power, Lord God, the spirit, God, to be able to walk in the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Help us know who we are in you, Lord God. Help us to embrace the authority and the power given to us by your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will not be afraid, Lord God, for I will not be ashamed of this gospel. And I will not be ashamed to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. So Father, use every one of us, Lord God. For I God anointed in his image with the Holy Ghost in power. Who would about doing good all those who praise the devil because God is within his image, Christ in that ministry, and the whole church says, Amen.